and coming in. I will slowly begin the, the introduction here. So we are extremely happy to have Dr. Kang Lau joining us today. Um, we'll get to the title of his work in a moment, just briefly. Dr. Lau is an instructor in the Department of Radiology at the Stanford University School of Medicine. He received his PhD in biomedical engineering from Zhejiang University in China in 2018. Uh, so following the completion of his PhD, he's appointed to be a postdoctoral research fellow at the Massachusetts General Hospital, um, also in Harvard Medical School under Dr. Kyle Sesenbach. And his research is focused on improving the efficiency of data acquisition and reconstruction in MRI. And last year, he came to Stanford to join Dr. Sesenbach's lab um, as a postdoc. Uh, and he's, um, his research is now focused on developing new technology for diffusion and quantitative MRI. Dr. Lau has received Many awards, including the Summa Cum Laude Merit Award and the Junior Fellow Award from the ISMRM. So, with this, um, I would turn it over to you. Uh, thank you again. And as okay. questions come up, please put them in the chat box. Thanks. Okay. Thank you for the introduction. I'm happy to present today. So, today, my topic is about the uh, sub millimeter diffusion acquisition techniques. Uh, the talk contains two sections. Firstly, I will give a brief review of novel acquisition software and hardware for high fidelity some millimeter diffusion imaging. I will talk about the techniques such as multi-shot VPI acquisition, 3D volumetric encodings, and the dynamic B0 shimming using our home-built ACTC coil. Then in the second section, I will talk about our recent work on 500 micron isotropic resolution diffusion MRI using G slider Buddha circuit API acquisition. Uh, to improve the image quality, uh, we will use the scope dynamic field camera to measure the trajectory of circular API and B0 information, and then incorporate them into our model based structure low rank reconstruction. So, okay, so let me start with the first section. Uh, in vivo diffusion acquisition techniques. The in vivo diffusion MRI with single shot EPI is widely used to study wild matter structures, but current resolution of single shot EPI is inadequate for the in vivo cortical diffusion imaging since the thickness of the cortical gray matter varies from 1.2 to 2 millimeter. Uh, here is an example of high resolution diffusion MRI the 660 micron data could show the uh, U fiber in the superficial gray matter areas, while the standard two millimeter isotropic resolution diffusion MRI cannot detect the U fiber on the same subjects. Um, however, high resolution in vivo diffusion MRI is hard to do for a couple of reasons. First, the readout of implant EP acquisition is long which causes image distortion, TP stop blurring, and the long T signal loss. Second, the multi-shot EPI is a promising approach for high-resolution diffusion MRI because it can shorten the long EPI readout with less distortion and blurring. However, due to the short-to-short -short phase variations, multi-shot EPI continues to be a challenge. Third, the SNR of high-resolution diffusion MRI is very low. So let's look at how we can tackle these issues in in vivo diffusion acquisition. Uh, first, I will give a brief introduction of multi-shot EPI acquisition to solve the short-to-short -short phase variation and the image distortion issues. Uh, the multi-shot EPI acquire the entire case space in multiple excitations, which could uh, which enables higher acceleration to mitigate the image distortion and blurrings. However, due to the physiological noise, such as respiration and the cardiac pulsation, combining multiple shots and correct the short-to-short -short phase corruptions are very difficult. Uh, to correct the short-to-short -short phase variation, a uh, navigated method will propose. The navigated method uh, use a dual spin echo EPI sequence to acquire the 2D um, navigator echo after the image echo to remove the background phase of the image echo. Uh, there are also self-navigating method to correct the short-to-short -short phase variation without the need of navigator echo. 
this method estimate the background phase of each shot using the prior information in case space, such as muscles and the Lorax, or the uh, prior information in the image space, such as news and the, the short locally low rank. Uh, and then remove the, uh, remove the background phase using the joint model based reconstruction. So first, let me introduce Muse as an example of the self-navigating method. The Muse technique first uses the conventional sense with total variation constraint individually to estimate the background phase among multiple shots and then jointly reconstructed the signal simultaneously from all segments of the interleaved the EPI. So with the MUSE technique, the short-to-short -short phase variation in used artifacts can be eliminated, which enables higher resolution diffusion acquisition compared to the single-shot EPI. So with this multi-shot EPI acquisition, the distortion is much mitigated. However, if we further push the resolution to some millimeter resolution, there are still image distortion at B0 in homogeneity areas. So I will talk about the, the distortion-free multi-shot EPI with bleep up and down acquisition, termed the Buddha EPI, to further improve the image fidelity. So in multi-shot Buddha EPI, we use two EPI shot uh, sample complementary subset of the case space one with the bleep up and the other with bleep down to create the, the opposing distortions. Then the B0 and the eddy currents information can be extracted from the acquisition pair via FSL top up. This information is then incorporated into a joint parallel imaging reconstruction with low rank constraint across the two shots to get one distortion free EPI image. Compared to the FSL top up, method that estimate the bleep up and down acquisition separately from, uh, with postal processing method, such joint Buddha reconstruction significantly reduce the G-factor noise penalty at high accelerations. So the joint bleep up and down parallel imaging reconstruction approach using hybrid space sense framework has been previously proposed by researchers from Stanford University here is the forward model of the hybrid space sense framework. If we incorporate the B0 map, as well as the short-to-short -short phase variations into the forward model, we can get one distortion-free image from the multi-shot EPI data. So based on this hybrid space sense method, we propose the Buddha reconstruction method that solves for two images. So what we want to do is to apply the structure low rank prior on the two short data. So we obviate the need for direct phase estimation and achieve improved reconstruction at high accelerations. The low rank constraint use the similarity of the reconstructed images from the two short data where the reconstructed images should have the same image magnitude but the different smooth image phase from the short to short phase variations. In this case, we just need the B0 map, which we can get from the FSL top up. Uh, okay, so let's look at the Buddha reconstruction in more detail. Uh, we, uh, we have the data consistency term for each shot. And on top of this, we are applying this low rank prior on the Hankel matrix. We go to the case space of each shot. We look at the local neighborhood we write down the one row of the data. Uh, we do the same thing for the second shot and the slide them around uh, to build uh, the Hankel matrix. And then we apply the low rank prior on this big data. Additionally, uh, additionally a partial Borel acquisition where EPI shot sample complementary case space section is incorporated directly into the low rank reconstruction to achieve a smart partial Fourier reconstruction. So after this structural low rank reconstruction, the two short images are combined to produce a single image where the background phase in each shot is estimated by real value post-processing and removed before the short combination. So let's look at some results. 
uh, if we do spin echo EP acquisition at a multiband two and the implant R4 forward acceleration, we can apply sense, SMS sense for each of these shots individually. We can see there are, um, these are suffer from the distortion artifacts as well as some of the voxel pie up issues. We can estimate, uh, we can mitigate this with Buddha and further improve the reconstruction. Compared to the hybrid space sense, the residual artifacts are eliminated in Buddha at a high acceleration uh, at this like A fold acceleration, especially in the zoom in area of the brain. So with this blip up and down acquisition, we can get the distortion free EPI with two shots. But for the diffusion acquisition at some millimeter resolution, um, another challenge is the SR efficiency. So after talking about how we, uh, how to reduce the short to short phase corruption and then improve the image fatality, now I, I will move to talk about how to boost the SR using 3D volumetric encoding for sub millimeter diffusion acquisition. So compared to the 2D acquisition and the 2D simultaneous multi slice acquisition, the 3D uh, multi slab acquisition has higher SR efficiency with shorter TR as shown in this figure. For example, uh, 3D acquisition with 19 seconds scan is similar to the achievable SR to the 2D SMS case with 72 seconds scan. However, the 3D multi-slab acquisition is more sensitive to the short-to-short -short phase variation, and the imaging is also sensitive to the slab boundary artifacts due to the imperfect slab profile and the spin history issue. So to solve these issues, 3D multi-slab acquisition use a, a dual spin echo EPI sequence, as I mentioned before, to acquire the both image and the navigator echoes. So with this robust slab boundary correction method, the slab boundary artifacts are much mitigated. Uh, G-slider G SMS is another 3D volumetric encoding techniques proposed by our lab. The encoding is performed through consecutive RF encoding rather than the gradient encoding along the slice direction and the combined using a linear uh, for water model based reconstruction to create the high slice resolution volume like this. The G slider are designed to provide like high signal in each of the R encoding acquisition for the robust estimation and the removal of short to short phase corruption without any uh, additional navigators. After proposed this G slider acquisition techniques, we then combine the G-slider acquisition with our uh, previous mentioned Buddha EPI technique for diffusion MRI, where five consecutive RF encoding pulses are used for a total 10 EPI shots per slab across blip up and down shots. So let's look at some, some results. This figure shows the single, uh, single diffusion direction DWI reconstructed by G-slider Buddha method, showing the high SRR of the proposed method at one millimeter isotropic resolution in just about 35 seconds. Compared to the uh, reference 3D fast spin echo images, the diffusion volume closely matched those of the reference images. Uh, after getting these high SRR images, we further push the resolution to a 6,000 uh, micron. Uh, these figures show the whole brain single diffusion direction DWI, colored FA maps, and the average DWIs in three orthogonal views. The reconstructed volume retain high geometric fidelity compared to the um, due to the reference MPRH, which is beneficial for core registration of MPRH. The, the zoom in figures show the cortical structure in FA maps. So to investigate the microstructure of the gray matter and white matter, uh, the whole brain uh, 760 micron data with two shells are acquired. 
the zoom in figure show the orientation distribution function ODF in som somatosensory cortex S1 and the primary model cortex M1. Uh, consistent with previous study, uh, we found the uh, radial orientation in M1 and the tangential fibers to the local cortical surface orientation in S1 area. We also calculate the radiality uh, map at a different uh, uh, surface. The radiality is low at the white gray boundary, uh, higher at the middle cortical div, and the lower at the pure surface with the low radiality of S1, uh, indicated by this blue arrow at all cortical depth which reveals the tangential fiber in the S1 area. So after talking about the novel sequence and the reconstruction, uh, I, would, I would like to talk about the novel acquisition hardware for diffusion MRI. The hardware I would like to talk about is a 32 channel AC-DC coil that could be used for dynamic multi-coil B0 shimming. So the conventional scanner are equipped with a static second order shim coil to compensate the B0 field over the target volume. However, for the EPI acquisition with high implant resolution, we still see the image distortion due to the local B0 inhomogeneity at the 3T and the 7T. So to get a better shim performance, we can do high order B0 shimming. Uh, one solution is to make a local multi-coil array patterned around the image object to provide the dynamic high order B0 shimming. However, it competes uh, with the RF coil for space near the body. So we integrated the receiver coil and the local multi-shim array into the same loop. That's why it's called the ACDC coil. We add shim uh, we add shim loops on top of the 32 channel receiver array to provide the dynamic B0 shimming ability while preserving the array's reception sensitivity and the parallel imaging performance. Here is the result of my recent work on combining a 20 minutes, one millimeter isotropic G slider diffusion acquisition with dynamic shimming. Uh, this figure compare the image distortion with, with, this is with and without dynamic shimmy. So to accentuate changes in geometric distortion, data were acquired using both AP and PA phase encodings. Uh, the results highlight that the B0 distortion was mitigated with slab-by-slab -slab shimmy compared to the standard global second-order shimmy the results were then combined with an implant for fold acceleration to achieve a total 10.4 fold reduction in delta B0 distortion, yielding imaging with, with outliers, with outliers closely matching that of the reference T2 uh, fast spin echo images. The dynamic shimmy shows the ability to tackle in difficult to shim area in lower brain which is in uh, which enables minimum geometric distortion in the typical problematic temporal lobe, uh, temporal lobe area, which are beneficial for mapping cortical diffusion patterns in these regions. We further push the spatial resolution to 600 micron using the uh, multiband two and R five fold accelerations per shot with the linear EPI readout and the echo spacing at very high spatial resolution, the amount of phase accrual from B0 in homogeneity across readout uh, will increase. The increase in such phase accrual at a high spatial resolution will therefore negatively impact the conditioning of the Buddha EPI reconstruction and increase the G-factor penalty map. So to mitigate this issue, a uh, dynamic B0 shimming with, uh, with the 32 channel ACDC coil was used to reduce the B0 in homogeneity and enhance the level of the distortion differences between the blip up and down data. So with this dynamic shimming, B0 variation is reduced by more than 50%, which is, 
which results in a 22% G-factor improvement. This could improve the conditioning of Buddha reconstruction at 600 microns solution. These figures show the average DWS and colored FA maps of the 600 micron isotropic data. The zoom in figure shows the sagittal view of the colored FA map, displaying the high resolution capability of the 600 micron data. The G slider Buddha uh, EPI with dynamic shimmy uh, provides distortion free uh, 600 micron diffusion images, which are beneficial for mapping. Uh, cortical diffusion patterns. So recently, uh, our lab also shared a whole brain in vivo diffusion MRI data set acquired at a 760 micron on a single healthy subject with nine two hour sessions and about 1200 Q space samples. The creation of this benchmark data set is possible through the synergistic use of advanced acquisition software and the hardware I talk about, including the ACD Shim coil, uh, SNR efficient G slider Buddha API acquisition, and the advanced structure low rank reconstruction. So compared to the 1.5 uh, ISO diffusion datasets, the benchmark datasets show the improved ability to visualize the subcortical region and the gray white junction at the 760 micron resolution. So to summarize uh, the first section, in this section, we present G slider Buddha EPI with dynamic shimming to tackle issues of EPI acquisition for, for 600 to 800 micron diffusion MRI. To reduce the long EPI readout, we first propose a multi-shot EPI with interleaved the bleep up and down acquisition Buddha EPI and the joint parallel image reconstruction together with the ACDC coil to achieve distortion and the navigator free EPI. Second, we apply the structure low rank constraint across two shot to correct the short to short phase corruptions. Finally, we combine the Buddha EPI with a RF encoded simultaneous multi-slab acquisition termed G slider SMS to boost SNR and enable high isotropic resolution diffusion MRI. So that's the first section of my talk. So if we further, if we want to further push the implant resolution to 500 micron, we still suffer from the um, long EPI readout and the low SR. For example, even with our uh, implant R5 for the acceleration and the partial free is 60%, uh, the EPI readout is still very long. It's still about that, like, 90 milliseconds. If we look at the sequence diagram of the EPI acquisition, uh, only 30 percent uh, RAM sampling is used. The long EPI readout would cause like a long TE of 77 milliseconds and uh, about 1.58 times point spread function uh, T2 star blurring. Therefore, in the second session, we propose a novel circular EPI acquisition with S low rex reconstruction to address this issue. The section has two parts. The first part is the sequence part. With the circular EPI acquisition, uh, our G slider Buddha circular EPI sequence could achieve about 40% reduction in echo twin length and T2 star blurring at 500 micron isotropic resolution. The second part is the S LORAX reconstruction. Compared to the previous structure low rank reconstruction, the S LORAX could take advantage of smooth background phase for uh, partial Fourier filling and account for the short to short phase variation. So, first, let me talk about the trajectory design of the circular EPI. The circular EPI is first. Uh, is firstly proposed by John Pauly and Adam Kerr in 1995. In our work, we proposed the circular Buddha API with both readout and the phase encoding partial Fourier and the full ramp sampling, which significantly reduced the echo train length and TE. In each shot, the, the circular API only acquired about 30% case-based data. The missing phase 
the missing phase encoding part of the flip up shot could reconstruct it using the information from the acquired part of the blip down shot. And the missing phase encoding part of the blip down shot could, could be recovered using the acquired part of the blip up shot. Also, the on the sample the readout partial Fourier part could be reconstructed by leveraging the conjugate property of the two shot case based data and the smooth space prior of the SORX reconstruction. Also, the central part of the case space is acquired using the constant echo spacing to enable low resolution blip up and down images from the central region to be used for uh, off resonance estimation. The resolution of the central part of the case space is about two millimeter, which could capture the background phase for the s lorex reconstruction. So here is the comparison between the circular EPI and the standard uh, EPI at 500 micro resolution. The trajectory length of the circular EPI versus standard EPI are 51 millisecond versus uh, 90 millisecond, uh, which demonstrate about 40% reduction in echo train length. The corresponding points breadth function of Buddha standard EPI is about 1.58x that of the actual resolution, while the uh, point spread function of Buddha circular API is 1.3, resulting in a significant reduction in image blurring for 0.5 millimeter API data. Second, let me talk about the trajectory correction for the circular API. So the imperfect gradient waveform and the B0 drift would create the image artifacts and blurring. In this work, uh, we are using scope dynamic field camera to measure the gradient waveform slice by slice and feed up to third order spherical harmonics with high temporal resolution. Uh, this figure shows the measured KX, KY trajectory versus time plot of, the, of a Buddha uh, circular EPI pair. Uh, we look at the bleep down shot, for example, and compare the measured trajectory with the design trajectory, we found the measured and the design trajectory are aligned okay. But if we zoom in, uh, we zoom in the edge of the trajectory, we found that there is a variable offset along KY dimension, especially in the high KY region. Therefore, we can use this measured trajectory instead of the uh, design trajectory on our circular EPI reconstruction. We also measure the high order spherical harmonic of the G slider Buddha circular EPI sequence. Here is, here is a comparison of um, high order spherical harmonics between B value of zero non-diffusion uh, images and the B value of 1000 diffusion weighted acquisition. As what we can see uh, with diffusion encodings, the long time constant of the eddy currents from the diffusion gradients affect the image acquisition and the trajectories and would cause the image artifacts. Therefore, with the scope measurements, we incorporate the measured trajectories as well as the B0 information into our forward model to improve the performance of the reconstruction. So now let me talk about the detail of the reconstruction pipeline of the acquired G slider Buddha circular API data. The reconstruction of each G slider encoding includes uh, first the, the trajectory and the ghost correction using the scope measured information. Uh, second, the central case space of each shot is reconstructed using SANS with uh, L1 wavelet regularization. The reconstructed low res images of the Buddha pair are used to estimate the field map via FSL top up. Uh, the, the estimated field map and the, the variable uh, echo spacing of the circular API are then incorporated into a model based joint reconstruction with a SLORX operator across two shots. So let's look at the SLORX operator in more detail. Uh, we go to the case space of each shot. Uh, we look at the local neighborhood uh, S kernel and the conjugate 
position of the case space S star, uh, we write down uh, two rows of the real and the imaginary part of the data using this S, S matrix formula. We do the same thing for the blip down shot and the slide them around to build this uh, big Hankel matrix. Uh, it's called the Hankel S matrix and then apply the low rank constraint on this matrix. With multiple iterations, we can see the missing case space is filled using the S Lorex reconstruction. The proposed S Lorex re reconstruction is performed for each of the encoding uh, volumes. Uh, the 5G slider volume are combined using a forward model based reconstruction with T1 and B1 plus correction to create a high slice resolution volume. So after talking about the reconstruction pipeline, uh, we want to uh, characterize the performance of the S Lorex re reconstruction in reconstructing the missing partial Fourier data. So the Buddha circular, first we, we just do some uh, simulation. The Buddha circular API with five eighths spread out and the face encoding partial Fourier was simulated from a reference Buddha standard API data set using the circular sampling mask. The reconstructed case space demonstrate that the Buddha circular API reconstructed using sense without the s resulting resulting uh, resulted in missing uh, high case space data while incorporating as low rex reconstruction into this model based reconstruction can help effectively recover the missing case space. Uh, this figure show the image reconstructed images of the reference Buddha API data, uh, Buddha circular API with sense recon and uh, the Buddha circular API with S Lorex reconstruction. Consistent with the case based results, the Buddha circular API uh, with S Lorex reconstruction achieve higher resolution and the less bl blurring compared to the Buddha circular API with sense reconstruction, leading to small RMSE in diffusion weighted images. Uh, furthermore, this movie shows the comparison of single shot blip up API data, uh, the Buddha circular API with sense and the Buddha circular API with s Lorex reconstruction across 50 division directions. As what we can see, uh, the single shot API data have distortion artifacts move up and down across 50 division direction even after like R4 implant accelerations. Uh, Buddha circular API with sense reconstruction and the top up correction improve the fidelity of the API and, uh, and correct the geometric distortions. But if we look at the case space, it loses resolution in missing case space regions. The Buddha S Lorex reconstruction achieve the same fidelity as top up. And furthermore, it also fill out the missing case space achieve. Uh, and achieve high uh, resolution. Uh, we can look at the, the color FA map of the Buddha circular API with sense, uh, with sense reconstruction and the top up correction and the Buddha uh, S low circular API with S low rex reconstruction. If we look at uh, these two results look very similar, but if we look into the details, we can clearly see that the the dark band between white matter and gray matter boundary in the Buddha S Lorex results, while in the Buddha Sense results, the white gray boundary is blurred due to the point spread function blurring and the loss of the res resolution at the high case space region. Uh, all of these are the simulation of, of Buddha S Lorex reconstruction to validate the performance of the S Lorex reconstruction. And then we, uh, we acquired the Buddha circular API with uh, prospectively. Uh, this figure show the reconstructed RFA encoding the thin slabs and uh, the representative diffusion weighted and the 10 diffusion direction averaging slices at a 720 micron isotropic resolution using our proposed G slider Buddha circular API with S Lorex reconstruction.
uh, and then we further push the resolution to 500 micron isotropic. The, the fig, this figure show the average DWI of the 500 micron isotropic diffusion data with TE of 65 uh, milliseconds. The total acquisition time is about 108 minutes. Uh, here is uh, one slide, one slice of the FA map, and the zoom in figure shows the high resolution capability of the 500 micron data. Because the FA map is still look noisy, we reformatted the FA map by averaging the adjacent five slices to get uh, the high SR. Uh, the reformatted FA maps shows the high quality meso scale cortical diffusion images, and the zoom in figure show the dark band uh, of the gray white boundary clearly. So the reformatted <coughs> the reformatted colored FA map in three orthogonal view are also shown here. Uh, so finally, uh, to summarize uh, this talk. Uh, in this talk, I present the SNR efficient G Slider Buddha circular API acquisition with model based uh, structure low rank reconstruction uh, together with dynamic shimmer array and the field camera hardware to achieve a high fidelity diffusion MRI at 500 micron isotropic resolution. In comparison to the standard API, the proposed method provides uh, improve SNR and reduce blurring. This solution should help make microstructure imaging more practical. So thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you for this excellent presentation. I think if, if there are questions, if people could enter them into the chat, um, I would start out with, with one of my own. Okay. This this is acquired on a standard clinical scanner, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we've we've seen some work in the field for taking results from from very high powered scanners such as the Cactone system or, or other ones, um, and then using information from those scans to then inform reconstructions at at more standard um, more standard scanners. Do you think there's some some way you could utilize information from the kind of more um, higher gradient strength scanners to give you information to incorporate into your reconstruction at a, at a standard scanner? Uh, sure, yeah, uh, that's a good question. So as what we know actually, uh, uh, of course, for the diffusion imaging, if we have like a higher performance gradient, it could uh, further reduce the the TE of the diffusion acquisition and uh, also improve the SNR a lot. Uh, and uh, this sequence, uh, so all the results we shown here uh, are just uh, the clinical scanner, uh, but we also developed, uh, we can also develop this sequence and uh, use that for the uh, high performance gradient, the result will be further improved. Yeah, of course, yes. And uh, it's, it's the, the acquisition is the same and the reconstruction method are also the same. The only difference is, is we, get, we can use like a better gradient performance to further uh, all the better like a receiver coils to further in, reduce the TE and improve the SR. So that's, I think that's definitely uh, doable. Yeah. Okay, I'd, I'd have another uh, kind of a, a follow up question there. So sure. the, 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 the reconstruction, I think, doesn't use prior information about what the brain looks like, right? It, it just is, is based uh, on the... Yeah, I think the reconstruction doesn't use the prior information mm -hmm. in, uh, in the image space. I think it just use the low rank constraint. Uh, the low rank constraint prior information, uh, as what I showed here, uh, let me say here, the low rank constraint uh, used the similarity of the reconstructed two shot images. So which 
assume, uh, assume that the magnitude of the multi-shot images are the, of two-shot images are the same, but the differing the smooth background phase across two shot. So okay. it doesn't, so the prior information is like uh, the similarity uh, between two shots and then we can combine them, right? Great, and then I won't see any more questions pop up and ask another question. Um, you've, you've shown kind of exquisitely high spatial resolution, which is um, achievable by this method. Can you go also the other way and acquire something which is a nominal two millimeter or 1.5 millimeter spatial resolution, but just do it much faster using these techniques? Uh, so, uh, can you say that again? How can we do two millimeter and uh, achieve faster? So yeah. So, so if if we have a if we have a given signal and we have a given set of acceleration parameters, we can generally yes. choose. We can go very high spatial resolution, or we can yes. go very high temporal resolution. Sure. Do you have sure. a sense for the for the speed improvements you, you, you could achieve with these methods? Yeah. So that's. I think this is related to this. I mm -hmm. think the spatial. I think this method is a trade-off between the spatial and the temporal resolution. Mm -hmm. Uh, for example, if we go to very high spatial resolution, uh, uh, we want to get a very good SR efficiency, right? So, hmm. for example, like a 0.8 millimeter isotropic resolution or one ISO resolution, we found that some previous research showed that 3D multi slab acquisition is the best because. Uh, compact is is best among the two D SMS and the two D acquisition. So it depends on your resolution. If you say okay, maybe for the fMRI acquisition we need a, like a higher temporal resolution. Of course, we we can do the this three D acquisition. Uh, for the for the like fMRI EPI acquisition, but if we do the diffusion acquisition, I think. If we want to go like a higher resolution, higher spatial resolution, I think this 3D volume metric encoding can achieve like a better SR efficiency. But uh, I, I agree with you that if, if we just want to get a higher acceleration, we just do two millimeter, maybe we don't need to use this method. I think these techniques is are only uh are only good for the some millimeter acquisition techniques. That's what I okay. think. Yeah, you okay. so we, this, yeah, you this just is particularly this is particularly designed for these submillimeter isotropic techniques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's a two millimeter, I think I think the conventional two uh, D EPI is fine. Yeah. Great. Well, I have nothing further other than to say thank you again, and you for for taking this very early early morning time slot together with us. Yeah. Right. And with this, I would uh, thank everyone else for coming and I would, I would close this session. So, thanks very much. Okay.